gymnast, Olympic gold medalist, Jordan Weaver. Come on. Come on out, Joe. We're doing more hugging. I right know now. you, Joe. Yeah. Hello, hey, cool. where are you here? here? So we're just talking about uh, longevity in the sport and, and what happens after, I mean, after you win at the Olympics. It, it really is, it, it, it's a different experience. You, you come home and you have to kind of figure out what you're doing with your life and, and you are doing some incredible things. Uh, Thank you. We, uh, we want to hear all about what you're doing, but you're also working with UCLA, which yes. is fantastic. Yes. I mean, we do gymnastics for our entire lives. I literally started when I was three or four years old and retired at the age of 18, which is so weird. I feel like retired is not the right word to use, but um, you kind of you kind of have this feeling of, okay, what do I do next? I've reached the peak of my sport, and what am I supposed to do next? And for me, it was very natural to just want to go get a college education. And um, I originally wanted to do college gymnastics at UCLA because uh, I love Miss Fell. <laughs> um, and it's such a great university for academics and um, and I ended up going there and working with the team. Um, and now I'm pursuing a career at NCAA coaching. So it was a really good transition for me because I love the sport of gymnastics and it was just natural for me to be in the gym every single day. Um, and I, I get to give back to the sport that I love. I love that there's so many ways that we can continue to give back. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to be a coach or a gym owner or a judge or a commentator or, or do show, it doesn't matter. There's so many avenues for us. I I'd have to jump in because, and I've said this probably a thousand times and I'll say it another 20,000 times because it's so important and we're talking about giving back. You have a gold medalist and um, when she came to UCLA, I told her that the only position we had available, she couldn't coach because the NCAA tells you how many coaches you can have on staff. So she could only come in as a team manager and Jordan Weaver said, I will do anything for my team. I said, well, Joe, if you're gonna be a team manager, then you're moving mats, you're chalking bars, you're washing leotards, <laughs> you're a gold medalist. And she said, I will do anything for my team. And so for the three years, her first three years, she was our head team manager. And talk about a servant's heart and giving back, not just to her team, but for all of those people, not just young people, but people in the stands, that saw Jordan Weber at our meets moving mats. What a gift. What a gift. What an incredible example that you've set for so many that watch you at the Olympics and then continue to see how hardworking you are. Thank and you. it doesn't stop there. You do so much charity work. Can you tell us a little bit about the charity work that you do? So one of my favorite things, um, I actually work with a nonprofit organization called the Nigu Foundation. Um, it's based upon a little girl who um, died of cancer when she was, I think, 11 or 12 years old. Her name is Jessie Reese. Um, and she had this amazing idea of giving back to the other little kids in the hospital who can't leave and who are so sick. Um, so she, she packed up these little joy jars with little toys and little activities that they can use while they're, while they're sitting in their hospital bed, unable to move or do anything. Um, and so now the foundation goes around and lives out her legacy by giving joy jars to kids all over the country. Isn't that amazing? Um, Love it. So one of my favorite things yeah. is to visit all these hospitals as an Olympian and share my story and hopefully inspire these little kids to never ever give up. Absolutely. You know, it, it's so amazing that what these children go through, um, what their parents go through, certainly, but uh, the resilience of, of these children when you see them in the hospital and, and, and they're ready, gung-ho, to fight and fight, mm -hmm. and, and they're holding their parents up. And, and I just mm -hmm. can't imagine that. As a mom of two, I can't imagine going through that. But to have people come into the hospital and, and allow them to kind of take a breather and be a kid. Just not, don't worry about having the cord and everything, right. just let's be a kid. Yeah, I and I, I know my Olympic experience and all the injuries and obstacles I had to go through can't even compare to fighting cancer, but if I can go in and just put a smile on their face, that's really, that's really what it's all about. It's what I want to do. That's it's fantastic. always amazing to me how much they light up. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as horrible as they may be feeling at the moment, when you go in, or I know Maddie Koshin's been doing a lot um, with NIGU as well, um, never ever give up, um, that's the acronym, but to see them just, there's something in them that this joy comes out of them when you walk in the room. It's, mm -hmm. it's extremely powerful. It's incredible. That's why I love it. Just even if I can see them smile or even put a smile on their parents' faces because it's just as hard for them. Absolutely. So let me ask you, how, what was the most daunting part of going from an athlete, okay, team manager, you got that part down, 
but then coaching last year. Ooh. <laughs> it's so different. It's completely different because as a coach, you're not in control. You know, as a gymnast, you're out there, you're competing, you're able to control what's going on, you're able to... Are you a bit of a control freak, Jen? Um, <laughs> slightly. A bit? Is there slightly. a gymnast that isn't? A, bit a little bit. It's okay. in our blood, Miss Valley. You can't help it. <laughs> um, but going out there and kind of not being the person who gets to perform, it's, it's a different experience for me, but um, being able to kind of transfer my knowledge and transfer my confidence to the other girls, and uh, it, means, it means the world to me. And I've always been a very team-oriented person, um, especially like after my experience at the Olympics. I didn't do as well as I would ho wanted to individually, but to come back and, and help the team win the gold medal, I just realized that that's, that's what is in my blood. It's, I, I, I love being a part of a team, and that's why I'm so attracted to college gymnastics and, and why I love coaching now. That's awesome. I love it. We have another surprise guest. Stay here with us. Okay. Stay here with <laughs> okay. us. Um, keep us going. But, okay, huge announcement. We need the drum roll. Oh, I need the drum roll. Drum roll. Okay. Drum there you go. Okay, that's my drum roll. Okay. So, announcing Nastia Lucan, <laughs> Olympic champion. How are you doing? Hi, baby. Hugs, Hugs everywhere. Hugs. Hi. Hugs. 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 Sorry. Have a seat. Have a seat. How are you? You're like everywhere. It's ah. great to see you. You too. It's been you a while. Everywhere, Nost. You had a I'm big here event right this now, though. <laughs> You're yeah. here right now, but you had a big event this morning. How did yeah. it go? It was it beautiful. It was awesome. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, it's been really fun. So my fiance and I actually started a new company called Grander Sports, and really just about inspiring the next generation of athletes and focusing on gymnastics first, and um, then women's sports all across the board. But today we had a really cool summit type event and had some amazing speakers and just really. Um, it was really awesome just to see so many um, bright eyes and just you could tell they were, you know, just hopefully taking it all in. So I have to tell you, though, setting up an event <laughs> and planning an event it is no joke. Um, I think we're so used to, like, showing up. <laughs> so, no, but it was, uh, I feel like it was really rewarding. So it That's was awesome. fantastic. It's yeah. the first step. Exactly. It's, I would say the first event is always the worst, and then you kind of get it down. Yeah, that's kind of I feel like if, if today was the worst, then, like, we're good. Well, <laughs> and the great thing is you have so many athletes willing to pitch in and help mm -hmm. out. And I think there was a long list of panelists yeah. that were there today, and, and that's kind of what we do. We're family, and we Absolutely. do our best to help each other out in whatever way we can mm -hmm. and just enjoy the sport. And, and really, I think for you as well, coming from you know, gold medal mm -hmm. at the 2008 Olympics, and then trying to figure out what do I do with my life? Yeah, that I feel like, I mean, we all know that's like <laughs> such a hard transition. Like I always say, you know, it's obviously hard to go from high school to college and then when you graduate college and you're going into the real world. But for us, it's like, I'm not saying our life is harder by any means, but it's just like, I feel like we're almost defined by the sport of gymnastics mm -hmm. for so many years. And it's like, who am I without that in my life? And mm -hmm. not that gymnastics won't be in our life because it's a huge part of all of our lives, but physically like not doing it every yeah. day. So it was, um, I think for me moving to New York and going to NYU and I'm sure Jordan, you could say the same, mm -hmm. going to UCLA and, and just being like a college student and meeting people from all walks of life and just um, being yourself and not necessarily just being, you know, Jordan, we, we were the Olympic gold medalist or, um, so yeah, I think like that transition at first was hard, but um, there's it's something been to great. be said to mm -hmm. kind of just getting outside of your element. I know yeah. that was that was hard for me, but you kind of have to do it. You have to jump in. You have to try something. You just new. have to go. <laughs> you have to be you outside do. of the yeah, sport. Exactly. You have to talk to other people, mm -hmm. see what else is going on in the world, because your world has been in in the gym. Totally. <laughs> I have a question for all three of you. Um, you're all gold medalists. You all achieved greatness at the absolute pinnacle, at the highest level, and so you are. People come up to you all the time. And what is something that someone has said to you, a stranger that has come up to you that's just like touched your heart and, or something that you would want them to know um, is okay to say yeah. or... Well, I think like one of the not hardest to things... Assume. Yeah, one of the... Exactly, that's what I was gonna say. One of the hardest things I think about our sport is when we're out there, or at least for me, I was like so serious and so stoic, you know? So I didn't really show like you my personality. Yeah, 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 well, I think yeah. Like, and I was like, yeah, I don't really want to speak for each yeah. other, but I really feel like we were like that. And and it's not like I didn't smile because I wasn't having fun or didn't enjoy it or didn't love it, but that was like the way, that was my game face. That was the way I focused. And so that's why I love being able to do events and meet people and come to stuff like this because they actually get to like, 
know the real you, just like Nastia, not Nastia looking right. the Olympic gold medalist. And I think that, you know, that perception, and, and sometimes it's hard too when you have like two seconds with that one person you meet. I always try to remind myself like, yes, this might be like the millionth person you've met, but that's the first time they've met you. So. Right. And I also, I think it's it's the reactions we get years after the Olympics. Yeah. We've, all, we've all processed what we've been through and we're out of our shells mm -hmm. and we're, we're coming into our own individual um, personalities outside of the sport. That's when you hear things and, and it just hits you so hard and people tell you that they, they inspire, or you inspire them to stay in the sport of gymnastics. Mm. That's something that's my favorite thing to hear. Yeah. Um, but and I think to, to your point of, or your question about one moment, and I, I have been here where I, I, if you're just tuning in, we're at the PNG Championships, National Championships for Gymnastics. And, and if you don't know, this is Jump, Jive, and Thrive. We're um, making sure everyone knows that. So Twitter, at Jump, Jive, in Thrive. In Not and Thrive, <laughs> in, in thrive. thrive. So you can do that, follow us on all the social media. But it, to your point, I, I think it all kind of came together for me a couple days ago. I was signing autographs, and, and as you said, you know, you're, you're the millionth person, and a woman came up and, and was literally shaking and in tears, and and I, you know, I, I didn't know what, what was going on with, with her life or what was going on, but she came up and she just clung to me and just gave me this huge hug, and she just said, I've watched you forever, and you've inspired mm -hmm. me, and wow. um, to, to have any thought that you could possibly affect someone's mm -hmm. life in that way. And I know mm -hmm. I have people, Mary Lou Retton mm -hmm. affected me in that mm -hmm. way. There's a, I mean, the reason why I am where I am, I think I, I owe a lot to Mary Lou Retton. Mm -hmm. And so to feel like you've somehow affected someone mm -hmm. that deeply in a positive way mm -hmm. is, it's just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's amazing. And I think we have to kind of remember to mm -hmm. Nastia's point, we have to remember that every person is going to remember that mm -hmm. for some time. Right. And I think we were all there at one point. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I mean like you talk right. about Mary Loretta and like the Mag 7 for me. <laughs> like <laughs> I remember that like those were the first games when I was watching that I actually understood what was going on and it was kind of like wow, like watching you guys win like in Atlanta on, you know, home soil and just seeing like the fans and the crowd and and you guys as a team and then now it's like I still have like pinch me moments where I'm just like I'm like friends with these people now, you know, and like the, they were my idols and so that's kind of how I put myself back the same thing as you said like back in those shoes of like you being that little girl just with big dreams and so that's that's really what it's all about you know what's funny is I knew your father <laughs> I, before you yeah <laughs> yeah exactly uh, so so Nastia's dad Valeri mm -hmm. he actually like taught me my ginger Really? Yeah, so he we come into our gym for class. I did not know that. I will never forget because Valeri, he's just always in shape. I mean, he can always do just any <laughs> To skill. this day. So Valeri, yeah. uh, go through his titles because he was Olympic champion in yeah. his own right. I mean, I don't, I'm a bad daughter. I don't even know all of them, but like the main ones, we, obviously. We two him. gold and two silver medals. Um, competed for the Soviet Union, but at the 88 games, so. Just um, incredible and history. And numerous other, yeah. Absolutely incredible history. Yeah. And so he comes in, he's a clinician at our gym. Um, you know, every once in a while, he comes in, I'm having trouble with this ginger. It's a move on bars where you release the bar, you got to catch the bar, and it's all confusing. And um, I don't know what I'm doing. And Steve Nuno, my coach, he's having trouble with me because he's kind of not able to show. Well, you get to a point too where it's like your coach can keep telling you the same right. exact and, and thing over and over and it's not through. clicking. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he comes in in one day and I remember he gets up on the girls bar. <laughs> so not the men's side. Gets up on the girls bar. No grips, didn't stretch out, nothing like that. Throws a ginger. Like, did you see that? Wow. And, and honestly, it was. I just had to see it. And I remember his advice to me was stop thinking. I, it was, That's it's right. just, it's yeah, one of yeah. those moves where I just, Remember I was getting in my own way. Yeah. yeah. Just stop thinking. That's so funny. I literally said that today right. and, you know, I was like, like mental blocks and fears and stuff and like all that is normal. But I always say like, and not even in gymnastics, but in life, like sometimes we just think a little too much. Like <laughs> yes. take a deep breath and just like do what you know how to do. Okay. If you all could go back to your favorite me, one mm. moment in time. <laughs> One. Oh goodness. I know. I have a funny moment. Well, not yeah. funny, but <laughs> <laughs> um, when I went up for my floor team, it was the last event of the team finals in London. At the Olympics. Yes. And Nastia was there. She was sitting at the table with the FIG, and I walked up, and I'm kind of getting in my zone. And I just like I glanced at Nastia, and she had to be serious. <laughs> I know. I was like really trying not to. Lie. She like she just gave this little just this little smirk, and I was like, oh my god, like Nastia. <laughs> 
Wait, I did Jill, not. I was like, okay, okay. I got this now. I can do it. Oh my oh, god, that's just at me. I got this now. Me. So <laughs> that means I can make <laughs> my quarantine at the Olympics. That's just funny, funny little thing. But I think that last event of the team final. In, in the Olympics was yeah. probably my favorite moment. Just going out there, I remember just feeling so free on the full exercise. I didn't like, I didn't think really at all. Yeah. I just had fun and enjoyed it, and that was probably my like. I'm kind of like getting shaky talking about oh. it, but it was just the most amazing moment for me. What was yours? Gosh, I mean, the Olympic all around final for me was obviously like an amazing moment. But I think um, one of my favorites was even just going out for qualifications at the Olympics. And I, I was the tallest at 5'3". But so, you know, I was like standing in the front of the line with my teammates behind me and we we're standing in the tunnel about to mar march out. And and I remember we all just kind of like looked at each other and we all took a deep breath. And I knew like we all had the same feeling, butterflies mm -hmm. in our stomachs, almost had tears in our eyes. We knew we were about to embark on one of the most memorable experiences of our lives. And, and yet we didn't know what was gonna happen. Like mm -hmm. we weren't Olympic medalists, we weren't gold medalists or anything, but our dreams of becoming Olympians were That's about amazing. to come true in literally like 10 seconds. And it was just like this moment that I remember still, like just being like the same, like kind of like shaky, like those mm -hmm. shaky feelings, but also knowing like how incredible moment how incredible of a moment just standing there like kind of like looking through this tunnel like into your future it was just it was really cool you know, I, I think i love the atlanta olympics obviously i love the barcelona olympics winning a gold medal home soil yeah. <laughs> not about it's hard thing. to top a hard gold to top. medal yeah <laughs> but um i will say that probably my favorite um gymnastics experience my favorite competition experience was one of my first international competitions i was a junior junior international how old were you i was probably 12. Um, Catania, Italy, and um, it was the first time that I hit all four events <laughs> at an international that meet. That was nice. That I was didn't nice. land on my yeah. face, which was a plus. Was Mary Lou, and, was um, Mary Lou spotting you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not yet. <laughs> but um, but it was, I, you know, I, so I felt good, and at the end of the night, there was my name at the top of the leaderboard, and it was incredible, and, and I remember I was marched out, because I'd never won anything internationally, never had to go to the podium, so I marched up to the top of the podium, and they hand you the flowers and the trophy and, and all that stuff, and then everyone stopped, and it was just silence. And then the music began, and it was my national wow. anthem. Oh, wow. And I saw the American flag. I chills. literally just got chills. I just got chills. All the way down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it, but it was, it was that moment in time where I wasn't a five-year-old that wanted to be in the Olympics. It was that moment in time that I knew this is all I ever want to do. I want to do this again. I want to do it on the biggest stage. That's the Olympics. I went home more inspired, ready to train. I think I did like 20 beam routines <laughs> a day for a month. I'm going. I'm going to the Olympics. I have to do this again. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And remembering that.